2014, buying at retail and selling inventory to a customer. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's the Facebook page, the website, and other details that I'll get to a little later on. What I'd like to envision in this scenario is buying a product from a vendor at wholesale and reselling it at retail. Up until now, Sturdy Blue Jeans, which is the company I have listed up here, has been a manufacturer spending money on materials and labor and reselling to a, a store called Elm Street Clothing, reselling blue jeans. In this example, we're going to buy blue jeans into inventory and resell them for a markup. So. At the very beginning, I have to create a new item. So if I go to list, item list, I'm going to click on a new item called outdoor jeans. I'm going to say OK to that step. And so it's a part of inventory. It's called outdoor jeans. There's a part number for tracking. When I go out and make a purchase order, it says Outdoor Jeans bought an inventory intended for resale to clients. And the sales transaction says Outdoor Jeans sold from inventory. I buy them at a cost of 40. It's a cost of goods sold account right there. I sell them at $60 a pair, and I have a sales account called Sales Income Outdoor Jeans. You'll see that it tells me in the inventory information how many I have on hand based on a PO, a purchase order. We'll get to that later. So I'm going to click OK. My next step is, after creating a new item, I created an estimate. So if I go to Customers, Estimate, and I click Previous, what I did was I selected my client Elm Street Clothing. This all automatically loaded. I selected the item outdoor jeans. The $60 price loaded. I entered a quantity and hit return and it multiplied 200 pairs of pants times $60 a pair to give me $12,000. So I've got an estimate. You will also see that there is a detail running off to the right that is a running total of the estimates, invoices I create, and other data that you've seen on prior transactions, which I think is handy. So we do that. I'm going to hit save and close. Now I actually have to go order the jeans that Elm Street wants to buy. So I place a purchase order. It's a little sensitive. I need to click on it just once. So I'm going to hit previous. I'm my vendor who's going to I'm going to buy the jeans from his mountaintop denim. You can see there the vendor and they're going to, they Mountaintop Denim are going to ship the jeans to me at Sturdy Blue Jeans. All this item information fills when I click on Outdoor Jeans, the explanation. I manually loaded that I'm going to buy 200 jeans. The cost of 40 is from the item data that I entered earlier, so it's $8,000. So I'm going to save and close there. So the next thing I'm going to do is receive inventory, assuming that they also send me a bill. Receive inventory with a bill. Now there's a prompt here. My vendor is Mountaintop Denim, and I get, a, I get an Open PO's Purchase Orders Exist command. Open Purchase Orders Exist for this vendor. Do you want to receive, that is receive the inventory, against one or more of these items? I'm going to hit Yes. There's the purchase order. It's, it's purchase order number two. Today when I'm making the video for Mountaintop, I'm going to hit OK. And the data loads in the system. Mountaintop Denim automatically loads here. So I'm going to put a little check mark next to this transaction. I'm going to hit OK. And I see that Outdoor Jeans item 200 pairs, my cost of 40, total amount is going to be 8,000, purchase order number 2, I'm going to hit save and close. And it's going to save my transaction. Now that I have the jeans in inventory, I'm going to go create an invoice. So I'm going to go to customer, create invoices. 
when I click on the customer and I go to Elm Street Clothing, it gives me available estimates. Well, the estimate that I made today was the 200 jeans at a retail price of $60. This transaction, I'm going to hit OK. And you can see that what loads is outdoor jeans, 200 pairs, retail price is $60, $12,000, save and close. So now I've got an invoice that I sent to someone. So the, the loop here is I created an item, an estimate, I skipped sales order and just created a purchase order for the jeans, received them with a bill, so now I have the inventory, and then I created an invoice and I loaded the invoice using the estimate. Let's just see how things would look in the reports, the financial statement reports. I'm going to go to reports, company financial. Let's go to the balance sheet first. You see I've got accounts receivable, money that people owe me. I'm going to click on that. And I see the invoice number two, I'm sorry, number three there. Invoice is different from the estimate number. For Elm Street Clothing, my client, there's that sales income account for outdoor jeans. If I expand it a little bit, there it is. The receivable is a debit, an asset account for $12,000. That was from the invoice that I just created. Do I want to memorize this report? I'm going to hit no for right now. You'll see that there's no inventory listed in the asset section of the balance sheet because while I received the inventory in, I sold the inventory so I don't have any inventory right now. If I go to reports, company financial, profit and loss standard, and I look at sales income, outdoor jeans, there is the income that I have for the jeans. The income category that I have for the jeans. One last thing, in the cost of goods, goods sold section, if I click on the detail, there is the invoice, number three, Elm Street, was the customer, outdoor jeans, the other side of the transaction, we split it with accounts receivable, there's the $8,000, the 200 jeans at a cost of 40, $8,000, there's my cost of sales. So, not going to memorize the report. I had cost of sales just for the outdoor jeans of $8,000. I had sales income of $12,000, so the profit just from the outdoor jeans was $4,000, 12 minus 8. That's as far as we'll get on this retail transaction. Uh, the website stltest.net. We do individual online tutoring and QuickBooks help. We have additional videos and Excel spreadsheets. That's hard to say on the, uh, the website. All of our YouTube videos are now linked to the website as well. The book Cost Accounting for Dummies, we're teaching in a free online course each week. And you'll see a link on the website to the blog, Accounting Accidentally, where I blog on many of the topics I have videos on. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.